everyone. Uh, this is Anna with the Paint Mixer. Happy Saturday. Thanks for joining us. Um, so today we are going step by step through this really adorable panda painting. So check it out. Super cute, very springy. Uh, I woke up to a couple inches of snow outside uh, on my porch this morning. So I'm excited to be doing springy green colors today. So um, before we get started, go ahead and prep your space. Make sure that you have uh, some butcher paper down on whatever table or surface you'll be painting on today. Um, also, if you did a creativity to go kit with us, you have that nice white butcher paper. So go ahead and spread that out. Also, now's a good time to get a cup of water so that your brushes can be nice and hydrated and rinse them out between colors. Uh, also, Make sure you're not wearing anything uh, you care too much about. So now is not the time to wear the cashmere sweater, maybe like an old t-shirt, an apron. And if you have long sleeves like me, go ahead and roll them up. So if you got our creativity to go kit, you are using acrylic paint. So acrylic paint is water-based. So water helps it spread and uh, it's good for rinsing out your brushes between. But if this paint gets on your clothes and dries, it's permanent. So. Just a little, a word of warning to kind of, you know, don't uh, don't be wearing anything too nice today. Okay, so if this is your first time joining us at the Paint Mixer, um, I'll kind of just tell you how it works. So I'll be going step by step through this panda painting, and it usually takes about an hour. Um, by the end of that time, you'll have your very own masterpiece, and I like to stress that it's your very own masterpiece. It's not gonna look exactly like mine. And even though I did this one, mine's gonna look different today too. So just keep that in mind. It's not about perfection. It's more about the process and just having fun. So less about fine art, more about fun art. Uh, okay, so another really important thing is your palette. So in your creativity to go kit, you have this little cardboard piece. This is our palette. So go ahead and um, put a little dollop of paint on there. I was doodling some flowers earlier. This, those are the red. Um, but all we're going to need today are black, ultramarine blue, vermilion, white, lemon yellow, and hooker green. So if you had the deluxe kit, tubes um, will kind of be those colors I just listed. If you have our standard kit, um, similar colors but slightly different names, go ahead and do the phthalo green, the phthalo blue. Uh, chrome yellow, white and black, and that's it. So pretty simple palette today. Um, but you'll note that I don't have too much paint on here yet. Since we're working with a pretty small canvas, you guys are just doing the eight by 10. You don't need a lot of paint. You can always add more to your palette if you need. Okay, so I'll be working on a larger canvas just so you guys can see a little more easily. Uh, and another really important creativity tip is to have some music going, make sure you're comfortable. So now's a good time to, you know, turn up whatever playlist you're rocking out to and let's get started. Okay, so our brushes are hanging out in the water cup, always uh, in here when we're not using them so they don't dry out. And you should have a small brush and a large brush. I'm gonna refer to them as the mama, the bigger one, and the baby, the smaller one. So your brushes might look like mine. I know this blue one is new. They might also look like so. So doesn't matter which one you have, um, just find the larger one to start, the mama brush. And we are going to cover our entire canvas with a nice teal color. So I'm keeping a little bit of water on my brush and I'm picking up some vermilion, some white and some ultramarine blue. So when I mix those together, it's this really pretty teal. So I'll show you on my palette too, so you know what colors I'm doing. So I have my vermilion, which is kind of teal color. I need a little ultramarine blue and some white. And I'm gonna take that color all over my canvas. So a trick here to get a lot of bang for your brush stroke is to add a little water to your brush. Helps the paint spread and it just keeps it really flowing smoothly. If you ever hear this sound, that means you need a little more water and a little more paint on your brush. Shouldn't be too scratchy. So also, if you have the standard kit, 
um, you're just gonna do kind of the same color combo. So mostly that dark green, phthalo green, some white and blue, the phthalo blue. It's fun to know the, the fancy names for the colors. And if you watch Bob Ross, he uses a lot of phthalo green and phthalo blue. So don't worry too much about, you know, having this be one super blended color. I think it looks cooler and more interesting if there's some brush strokes, if there's some variety. So maybe some streaks are a little lighter. Maybe some streaks are a little bluer. Another pro tip, whatever you put on the front, you can take it to the sides as well. So whatever color is on your front, you can kind of fold and continue onto the sides. So you don't need to frame it. You can just hang it right on the wall. That's the great thing about canvases. They got this little rim right there. The wooden part can just hang right on a nail. I think this panda painting is really cute for like a kid's room, especially. I have some new nieces and nephews that I think would, would love it. And just keep covering your canvas. Top to bottom and the sides. I'm not sure where you guys are located, but um, today in Park City, Utah, like I said, it snowed this morning. Wasn't really uh, expecting that. Wasn't too excited about it, but, <laughs> but it was very pretty on all the, the green leaves with some snow. It's something you don't see very often. But I'm loving this green color. It's one of my favorites. It kind of reminds me of like toothpaste or like turquoise ocean color. So also um, throughout the class, if you have questions, um, please ask them on the little comment box there on the right, the live chat. So I do know that you have to be logged into YouTube in order to access that chat. So. If you're not logged into your YouTube account, now's a good time to do so in this really easy step so that later on, when things get a little more technical, you can always ask questions or just say hello. All right, I'm almost to the bottom. All right. So I'm guessing yours took a little uh, quicker than mine, but if you're still covering your background, take your time. But the next step is to simply let this dry before we move on to our bamboo. So you can sit and watch paint dry. You can push pause and go get a snack, or you can join me and just shake it a little bit. So by holding on to the wooden side and just shaking, this really speeds up the drying process and it's kind of fun. Just watch where you're whacking. You don't want to knock over any expensive um, vases or anything you have in your house. Okay, so you're gonna keep shaking. I'm gonna set mine aside and just do a little um, bamboo tutorial. So you can shake and listen, but I find it's good to get a couple reps, get some practice before taking it to the canvas. So I have um, just a little demo sheet here, and our bamboo, is going to be a slightly different green than our background. So with your baby brush, that's the little guy, I'm going to mix up our bamboo color. So I got some lemon yellow and a little bit of hooker green. And you gotta be careful, hooker green looks very similar to black when they're sitting on the palette, but um, just make sure you don't grab black, get some green. So see, we get this nice kind of leaf green. If I add some white, it becomes more like key lime pie. So we're gonna be using a variety of greens. Some are gonna be this kind of creamy green, others can be more darker. Doesn't matter, um, just as long as you have a variety. So I'm gonna start with my baby brush and some of that green I just made. So it's the white, yellow, and hooker green. And bamboo is pretty easy. It grows pretty much in a straight line. 
But I think the cool thing about bamboo is that it's kind of segmented. So I'll actually use a larger brush to show you this a little better. So think about doing one stroke, kind of letting up. Oh, I gotta I got look what I'm doing. Kind of picking your brush up and then continuing again. So see how it segments your brush stroke and creates those little connectors where bamboo kind of meets in the middle. So I'll add a couple more little bamboo-y guys. These ones are gonna be a little longer, a little thicker. Check it out. So if you are feeling really confident with your mama brush, you can always use this one instead of the baby. So check out what happens with my mama brush. It's gonna be bigger, thicker bamboo. So up to you. This is about the width of my finger. So taking it to the canvas. First of all, I gotta check if my canvas is dry. Eh, questionable. A couple more shakes. All right, dry-ish. Definitely wait for yours to dry, but I'm gonna take a couple um, kind of uh, demo strokes here, just so you can see the bamboo again. So if you're feeling nervous about taking the bamboo to the canvas, you can always practice on your butcher paper before you do so. So again, you're using the baby brush. I'll be using the mama brush to show you a little larger. So let's see, my bamboo is gonna start up here. I'm kind of picking up my brush and putting it down again to segment my bamboo. And check it out, I'm gonna make my green slightly different. See how you can blend the paint when it's still a little wet and get a little variety of color. So if you check out the example, the bamboo, it kind of goes all directions. It almost is like a little canopy over our cute little panda. So notice all the different kinds of greens we have on here. Some are really yellow, some are really deep. So let that be your guide. Know that you really, no green is a wrong green. All greens are good. So I'm just gonna start building my bamboo and kind of think about, hmm, do I want it to curve at all? These are all choices that you can make and it's really impossible to make a wrong choice, so. Just one at a time. If it helps to guide you by just doing a stroke first, and then adding those segmented strokes on top, that works great too. Whatever feels right. Ooh, I might overlap this one. That's allowed. You can overlap your bamboo. Also, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And right now, I'm almost out of white on my palette. So if that's you too, can always reload, reload the color on your palette. Also, if you have the standard kit and the colors are slightly different than the ones I'm using, um, we have a cool color converter chart in your kit. Kind of shows you how to mix certain colors. It is pretty amazing once you, you know, learn the primary colors and then how to build from there. It's pretty empowering, pretty fun. All right, so I'm gonna try my best to not make these bamboos super even. Right now, they're like perfectly even and, and the same on each side. So I'm gonna make, make a little more random since it is nature and it's not perfect. Good news, it does not have to be perfect. Ooh, I like, if you just take some of that pure hooker green, that dark green, look how pretty that is. All right, a couple more. Maybe experiment with using the mama brush. See if you want to add a couple uh, larger bamboo stalks. Bamboo is actually a grass. So are palm trees. Palm trees, um, don't have tree rings, they grow vertically. 
So they are also a grass, pretty cool. We'll do a couple skinny guys. So if you hold the mama brush on end, see how you can get a really thin line versus that wide line? So check it out, I'll do a little, little skinny guy. And take your time, definitely not a rush. So that's the cool thing about these YouTube live videos too is that you can always push pause and you can always revisit the video later too. So it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Some more yellow. And if you wanna go back and you know add some extra details on your bamboo, so like maybe coming in here and doing some little horizontal lines to kind of break up those stalks, go for it. So the other part of bamboo that I hadn't talked about yet are the leaves. So there are just little kind of grassy looking leaves that come off of these stalks. So, Example first, see how they just kind of leaf out from the stocks you've been making? So go ahead and add some of those. With your baby brush or your mama brush, mama brush is gonna be a little larger. Here are some little leaves coming on there. It helps me to kind of press the brush onto the canvas and then flick it up and out, because then you're Brush stroke gets thinner at the end. And your leaves can definitely overlap other bamboo stalks. It's a cool thing about art in general, you know, it's not uh, it's not like a math equation or like science. It's really more about and if, what feels right. So I may just step back from mine a little bit and realize I only have leaves on the one side. So I'm gonna add ones on the other side. I don't have to have a certain amount on either side. It doesn't really matter. It's really just up to you. A lot of times um, in our regular classes, people will, you know, they just want to write answer. They just want to know, well, how many leaves do I do? And I say, it doesn't matter. And they say, well, well, how many do you think is right? It's like, well, there's no right or wrong. Some people have a hard time with that. I was never that great at math, so I love that there's not a right answer. I love that it's kind of up to you. All right, I'll do a couple more. A couple more little leaves. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna set mine aside to dry. You're welcome to shake it out, get those bamboo bits drying. Um, and while you're drying, I'm gonna do a little panda demo on one of our little palette pieces. So the panda is super easy. So, pretty much he is a half circle with some other half circles on top. So if you can make the letter uh, o or D, you can draw a panda. Very, very easy. So I'm just going to kind of demo on here first before taking it to the canvas, and you're welcome to do so too. You can practice on the butcher paper. So I'm imagining this is my canvas. It's about the same, um, same uh, size relatively. And my panda is going to be on the bottom here. So I'm just going to start by doing that kind of a half circle, he's just peeking up on the bottom. From here, adding two little ears. I gotta check on his eyes. They kind of angle out. See how they um, are almost tilted in? So it's less of his eyes and more the shape around his eyes. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's about the shape shapes we're working with. 
And we're gonna start out with white paint for the panda head and then add the black on top. So let's see how we're doing. So my pan is gonna go right here in the middle and I'm checking to see if it's dry. Perfect, you can always do the touch test or see if it's shiny. Like right now my bamboo is still kind of shiny. So I'm not gonna go over that, leaving that to dry a little bit. But just to show you, gotta get a lot of white ready for this. I'm going to start sketching my panda. So sketching it, I'm drawing the lines first before filling it in, it's less committal, and you can always edit a little sketch line. So white paint on either your baby or your mama brush, whichever you feel most comfortable with. I'm going to start and just kind of make a little half circle panda head. And see how I'm going side to side, just arcing like a rainbow. So you don't have to be super tense, you can kind of feel it out. Go lightly, it's super easy to cover up if you're not wild about it. Another tip, start smaller than you think. So you don't want your panda to be up here because that's gonna be really hard to shrink. It's much easier to make something bigger than to make something smaller. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of sketch out my ears in white, even though they're black. And then I'll even sketch out this little, these little eye shapes. All right, from here, I can fill in his head with white. Just like a coloring book, you made the lines and now you're coloring it in. And you don't have to be too like careful around the eyes because we're going over it with black. So we have like a second time to make these shapes. So you don't have to be too, too nitpicky about it. Also, you um, may see some of the teal peeking out from behind this white. And that's natural. White uh, is, you know, a much lighter color than that bluish green background. So sometimes it takes a little extra paint or also multiple coats. All right, I'm already out of white. Got to reload. All right, still filling in with white. Okay, I'm gonna step back from it to see if I like my shapes. Sometimes when I'm holding it with one hand and painting and not really looking at it, I get a crazy looking thing. So when I step back, I see that my two eye shapes are slightly different. So I'm just going to edit their shape a little bit. And that's a really good practice. So maybe it's a good time to step back from your panda and, and look at it and say, hmm, do my eyes look like they're in the right spot? Does he need to be rounder? Is he a skinny panda? Okay, so now I have my white part filled in. Time to fill in the black parts. Same dealio. Just like coloring book, filling in my ears. And I'm gonna cover up those white sketch lines that I did originally. I don't need to see those anymore. They were just a guide. Now I am ready. Okay. You know, they're kind of like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a panda. I feel like they're always at the zoo. I don't know if I've ever really seen one. I've seen brown bears and black bears in the wild, and that's always exciting. But never a panda. Alrighty, time to fill in these guys. So don't worry about the, the actual eyeball because once this black dries, we can go over top with that shape. But just for now, filling in these funny little spots. All 
I wonder if pandas, like if you were to see a panda in the wild, if you would, you should be afraid. I feel like they're just really cute and roly poly and kind of lazy. I can't imagine being that afraid of a panda, but who knows? Maybe they're fierce. All right, starting to take shape. Looking good. All right, so now I'm gonna let this definitely dry before we move on because our eyes and then some kind of curly, fun hair is gonna go on the edges. So I just wanna make sure when I do that hair, I don't pick up any white and have it turn gray. So now I'm gonna shake it out before our kind of final steps of the panda. This, this painting is great, it's pretty simple. We don't have to do really much perspective or really too much blending even. Now you guys, I think, are doing this size. This is a fun size to shake, almost like a fan. This one you can get a good arm burn, good arm workout. So also, while we're drying our panda, I'll just kind of take this time to give you guys some updates about the paint mixer and our studios. So um, these Zoom classes are definitely, you know, due to the current circumstances, but. Um, in Utah, where we're located, things are starting to, to slowly open. Um, so we are going to start taking private classes, both in studio and at people's homes. Um, so if you are at all interested in that, doing an actual in-person painting class, not just on the computer, um, you can go to thepaintmixer.com and have an inquiry for a private event. So it's pretty fun, like we can go outside and do plein air stuff. If you have a nice lawn, we can do some outdoor painting. Those are my favorite classes when you're outside in the sun. All right, mine is dry-ish, but I think it's dry enough to add my eyes first and then add some fun furriness. So let's look at these eyes on the example. How cute. So really, it's just a, a circle with two tiny dots because the black is already there. So we're just kind of creating a circle and two little shiny dots. And this will be with our baby brush. I'll do a little demo first. So if you want to practice, this is a good time to practice. All right, so here is our hmm, panda, making it a little, a little zoomed in so you can see a little better. All right, so there's my, the black parts. So I'm gonna mix up a gray, which is black and white, pretty easy. So the gray is going to be our circle. And then we're gonna use the tail end of the brush, that's the wooden side, to dip and dot two little white dots in our eyes. And that's really hard to see because it's white on white. So let me just show you on my actual canvas. It will look a lot better. All right, so again, gray paint, white and black, baby brush. Coming on here and just making a circle. One circle. I might add a little more white to my gray. There we go. Now you can see it a little better. All right, and two circle. Let's see if I can match the size. This is always the tricky part. Not bad. All right, so at this point, if you're like, oh my God, one eye is crazy and they don't match, paint over it with black, do it again. No worries, this paint is super forgiving. So you can always just paint over with black, let it dry, and take two. All right, now to make him really cute, right now he's kind of like a, a dead deadpan panda. 
It's not really looking too cute. So now I've dipped this in white paint, dipped the tail of my baby brush, and I'm just gonna add two little dots. And oh my God, all of a sudden he's like super cute. And there you go. I think the more, <laughs> the bigger the shine, the bigger the eyes, the cuter he looks. He's like those little stuffed animals with the huge eyeballs. I don't even know what they're called. Okay, at this point, it's fun furry time. So I'm going to start with um, the white. So just the white fur and just kind of adding little squiggles and wiggles to make him look furry and fluffy. And if you want, you can continue this all over the white head of your panda, or you can just leave it on the side edges. Super visible on top of that black, see? He is like very fluffy and sweet. I feel like baby animals are always fluffy. All right. Just continuing this all along the perimeter of my cute little panda head. And I would love to see your paintings when you're all done. That would be really great. So definitely take your time. Um, if you're really in the zone and loving this and want to just keep adding fun little details to your panda, go for it. Uh, but definitely take a picture when you're done and post it on Instagram. We would love to see your finished piece. This is what I look like when I wake up in the morning. Whoa. Okay, so same deal with the cute little fuzziness, but now around our eyes and ears with black paint. Little squiggles and wiggles. It's kind of fun to just turn off your brain, and this is almost just like a doodle at this point, just adding the fuzz, not having to make it look like anything. And the ears. Kind of helps to flick that baby brush away from uh, your ears. So that, let's see if I get this closer. Whoa. So that it kind of gets thinner as it goes out, right? Kind of like your hair. And you know what? This kind of style of painting, I think would be really cute for lots of different animals, like a tiny fox or a chipmunk or just anything. I love that there's this kind of style peeking over the canvas. All right. Nice work, guys. So at this point, definitely take a step back, look at it from a distance, and make some decisions. Maybe you want to add some more bamboo. Maybe you're like, oh, man, it's looking kind of sparse. Add some more. Maybe you want your panda to, uh, I don't know, have a bow. Why not? Give it a cute little bow. Uh, but really, that's uh, all the steps for this painting. Pretty easy peasy, but the final step for any painting, no matter what it is, is to sign. So initials keep it simple. Bottom right-hand corner is gallery standard. Got to take some credit for your hard work today. Nice. So glad you guys joined me today. I hope you have a wonderful Saturday and a wonderful Memorial Day. I'm just going to put our Instagram um, handle here in the live chat so you can share your finished piece on Instagram. We would love to see and share your panda. So it's at the underscore paint mixer. And yeah, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate your support during these very strange times. But um, do keep updated on our website with other 
creativity to go offering things you can do at home. We have some kids camps coming up to the University of Utah. So we'll be doing um, different art classes, not just on canvas, but those are really fun if you have little guys at home that, that need some art in their life. Also be looking to see when our studios will be opening and what that looks like. So again, right now it's, it's for private events. So that could be your family and friends. So people that you know, you can kind of just come to the studio or we can even come to you. So thank you again and have a wonderful Saturday. Really appreciate you guys.